Hi folks, Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today I want to continue with the, our exploration of, of adding a new locomotive entry to the Decoder Pro roster and then how to program it. And um, before we get started on this today's new functions, I want to touch back on a couple of things, questions that came up after the, the last uh, video. Uh, specifically, in that video I showed you that if you hover your cursor over a setting that you're working with, a little pop-up window will appear in, with a blue background uh, telling you a little bit about what it does in some cases, and it will tell you the CV that's involved. So somebody asked, well, how do you turn that on? Because it doesn't work on my uh, copy of, of the program. So after some digging around, uh, Greg Williams came back and said that it's actually, he found it in the um, preferences section under the roster entry, oddly enough. Uh, if you click on roster, you can see it says show CV numbers in tooltips. Now how do you turn on tooltips? Well, tooltips is actually in a different pane, display. So if you go here, you can see that the tooltip display time under display is available. I changed mine to 10 seconds to give a little bit longer time to view these things. So adjust the tooltip display time to whatever number of seconds you want those tooltips to stay displayed and then go to the roster setting and click on this show CV numbers in the tooltips and it will show you those CV numbers. Okay, so with that set up, then you'll, have, by the way, you have to do a save after you make these changes and then you'll have to respond and restart the program in order for them to be active. Okay, so that's all that's involved with. Let's close that and move on to another one. Um, I'm not going to save those because I've already got them set. Uh, let's go back to what we were working with here. The test F T. Well, I, I tell you what, I'm going to switch to a different one. I'm going to switch to this value, this one here. You notice something that's uh, appeared down here in the uh, Rostry, the summary screen, I now have an image of a Southern Railway FT locomotive. And in a minute I'll show you how to set that up. Okay, let's go back here to the roster entry. And this is for Southern FT 4111. Okay, now one thing I, I showed you last time was the, the basic speed control options here and then the speed table. Now something I didn't show you in the speed table is that if you scroll down far enough there are these preset speed table uh, entries here on the bottom. So you can have one that's four straight which is what this is here. You can match the end so I can go like this and I can move it like this and click on match the ends and it will give me a straight line between the two points. That could be useful if you like straight line uh, curves. Um, you can go with a constant ratio curve. So oops, let me let me drag this back down so it's emphasized more. Okay, so we have this type of curve here where it would represent a locomotive that starts out real slow and creeps up and then gains speeds and then increases its speed more rapidly after that. Uh, there's a log curve where the locomotive speeds up quickly and plateaus. Okay, And then you can shift these to the left, you can shift them to the right, you can pull them down and force them straight again. So there's a lot of neat little things that you can do in addition to using the typical three-point speed table or the 28-point custom speed table. So you can use a number of different ways to uh, to enter these. Also here on the bottom are the forward trim and the reverse trim. These allow you to adjust the amount or the speed of the locomotive going forward and reverse. And this can be very useful when you're doing speed matching. And the reason for that is sometimes locomotives will go faster forward than they will go in reverse and vice versa. Everything else being equal. So what this allows you to do is, is change the um, forward and reverse speed settings uh, to tweak 
how well they, uh, you know, how equally they respond to throttle, throttle settings. And like I said, that's very important sometimes when you're when you're dealing with um, speed matching locomotives. So that's something just come in and, and uh, fiddle around with and see how that works for you. Um, so you can see now fine-tune the forward voltage trim uh, voltage levels with CV66. This one CV95. So you can look that up and get a little bit more information on it. Okay, that pretty much wraps that part up. Um, one thing I want to point out too, I mentioned previously that I typically use the comprehensive programmer. Uh, for today's video though, I changed this to the advanced programmer option. Um, and what comes up with that? Well, you get two more panes here. First, you get function labels. These function labels allow you to customize what's going to appear on the JMRI virtual throttle uh, function buttons when you want to use those. So you can change any and all of these functions here and uh, customize the throttle to appear any way you want. Okay, It's a matter of just simply editing them and uh, clicking whether you want it locked on or off. Now, um, Rasta Media is another one that you can add. And this is how I've added this, uh, this image. And it's pretty straightforward. Let me remove it and I'll show you how to do it. All you have to do is have a roster image, um, a JPEG, a, a PNG file, a GIF, uh, stored on your uh, computer. And I've got one right here on my desktop. You can't see it because it's off image. But I'm going to grab that with my mouse cursor, bring it on, you can see it now, and I'm going to drop it right here and you see it suddenly appears. Okay, at that point, that image is now stored and associated with this particular roster entry. And I'm going to save it. Okay, so you can see it's down here again. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up and explore a couple of more options here uh, before I run out of time. Okay, so now we're back in this one. Uh, we've done function, we've done the speed tables, we've done basic speed control. Let's look quickly today at uh, the function mapping. Now, Soundtracks added a new extended function mapping capability when they came out with the Ekonomi and Tsunami 2 decoders. And it's, it's a much more user-friendly than method than the older legacy function maps is what they call them. And we'll look at those in just a minute. Um, basically though, for every function here, you can see them all listed along the left side. The headlight, backup light, the dimmer, mute, all of these different functions. You can select which button, function button, you want to control them. So the default is F0. I'm going to stick with that. Some of these others, you can see you can change you can change the dimmer from F7 to F10 or whatever. I'm going to leave it the same because I don't want to mess this up. Uh, but all of these, it makes it much, much easier to do function mapping and remapping with your, uh, with your decoders. Um, you can also control whether or not these functions operate with when the locomotive is moving forward, when it's moving in the reverse, whether it's standing forward, um, or whether it is reverse standing, okay, when it's stopped in the reverse direction or when the emergency button is pushed. So one thing you might want to do is like when you hit the emergency button, you might want the um, um, the bell to sound. So you could click that and then any time that you hit that emergency stop button on your throttle, the bell would sound. So that's one, th one way to use these things. Um, you could do the same thing with uh, the whistle. You could use uh, set it up with a Mars light, for example, on one function. Like if you had a Mars light installed on FX4 and hit the emergency button after you click this on and saved it, then the Mars light would come on when you go into an emergency stop situation. Okay, so that's one of the ways to use this. Uh, it is a very user-friendly way to do function mapping. If you go back and look at the old legacy function mapping, um, it's not as user-friendly as you can see. Um, there's not as many options and you have to figure out what goes on here 
some things work with some functions or function settings and they don't work with others. You can only choose, and, and by the way, if you click any single function on this old legacy uh, function mapping, it will disable the settings in the other function map, the newer function map. So you have to decide which one you're going to use. You can't mix and match them. Okay? Uh, I imagine uh, that the only reason that they kept this darn thing is to remain consistent with NMRA standards uh, for these uh, configuration variables. Okay? So they have to be able to be backward compatible with the NMRA. So it's still there, and if you have a, a locomotive that you've programmed, it's not going to go away. Okay? Uh, and if you like using this method, you can continue to use it. You just can't use a mixture of the old legacy and the new function mapping capability. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to stop because the next set of uh, functions on this top tier, like lights and, and other things, start getting a little bit more complicated. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, we'll continue this exploration of, of programming uh, and adding locos to uh, Decoder Pro in another video to come.